Think on this for a second. Every time you practice a good habit, you are being that good habit. You are changing for the better and you are becoming a new creation. That sounds mighty good to me. So practice good things and become those good things. And the opposite is true too, but we're not gonna go there. We're gonna think positively. Hi, I'm Jan, this is 316 Yoga. This is your yoga from home. This is a yoga you can do. Yes, you can, you can do it, you can do it all. It's a one hour long practice today. We practice every single day. We practice differently every single day because every day our body's different and we need different movements in the body to stay mobile and flexible and that's what we're focusing on today. Today's practice is all down on the ground. It is one hour long, but you don't have to stay for the whole hour you make it work for you, you decide how you want it to be. Maybe you just stick around for a few minutes, but I guarantee you, and I will guarantee you, that you will feel much better in your body just doing a little bit of yoga every single day. It's those small little steps that get you where you wanna be. And we all gotta move more. That is just a given. And your yoga feels so good. Make it feel good. The, do what's right for the, your body, as the bottom of the screen says. Do what is right for your body, nothing more, nothing less. You let it feel good. Don't strive to keep up with a pose because you think you gotta keep up with a pose. That's something you do in a class sometimes, and that's what we don't have in here. This is your yoga from home, you do it your way. There's nobody to your left or right doing it 10 times better, whatever that is. You just do it to feel good for you. That's all that matters. Every day, like I said, we practice. Join us every single day. We're free. Tell your friends about us. Okay. A word to think about as you practice today is the word assess. Assess means to uh, determine the value of something. You know, hey, what's in this for me? Determine the value of it. That's why we take a stress number at the beginning of the practice. So take that now. On a scale of one to five or one to 10, think of that scale in the doctor's office, frowny face to smiley face. Give it a number and say, eh, I'm feeling a six today. I don't know what your six means, but just give it a number that means something to you. So do that quick little body scan to include your head scan too. Give it a number. What's going on? Remember that number. Grab your props and let's start. Okay. The props I've got are my two yoga blocks. I've got a smaller one too. You know that as you practice you may find you really start to like. Like I'll show you when we come down into child's pose what I mean by that. Grab a strap or a belt or a leash or a jump rope. One of those things you have around your house. Your eye shade is great. A little hand towel is wonderful to go under your knees or cover your eyes or do lots of things with. And some water. You always want to have some water. Drink enough more water. Nobody drinks enough water. All right so sit comfortably. You've locked in that stress number. Come on down to sitting comfortably. I don't know how you want to sit. We're going to go into Thunderbolt in a little bit, but I'm going to come to that Sukhasana pose. It's called easy pose. I don't know why it's called easy because it's not easy, <laughs> but you sit any way you want. Maybe you just keep your legs long. Maybe you just gently bend your knees. Maybe you're seated in a chair. Totally fine. For the Sukhasana pose, you sit like the kids would sit. Crisscross applesauce. Or Here's, I can't do its fullest expression, but I'll show you part of its expression. And I don't worry that I can't do it. And you shouldn't worry either. Don't worry. All right, I'm gonna bring one foot up on top of the other thigh. So the sole of the foot is kind of up toward the sky. The fullest expression is to grab this other foot down here and bring it up and place it up there also. My hips don't bend that way. All right, take a deep breath in. <sighs> and a big sighing breath out. Maybe, close your eyes. Just sit comfortably. Breathe in through your nose, nice and deep. And breathe out through your mouth. Breathing, so many studies on breathing and how we breathe and the most efficient way of breathing and what your breathing means. In through the nose, filter the air. Out through the mouth to sigh it out a few times. In through the nose. Sigh it out, let it go, and just be at peace. I'll talk you through all of this. Don't sweat it. You've committed this hour, or however long you've committed. 
really get into it. Enjoy what it, this time is. Deep breath in. <sighs> Big breath out. Hands are on your knees, shoulders are relaxed. Maybe your shoulders are really good and over your hips as you sit up nice and straight. Breathe in. <sighs> Sigh it out. Breathe it in. <sighs> let it go, let it go, let it go. Move your head a little bit. You know, just circle it around if that feels good. And if you don't like having the eyes closed, open them up, but maybe kind of half masked them, kind of have the eyelids just a little closed, just to kind of filter out the world. Circle your neck around and around if it feels good. If it doesn't feel good, think of lengthening your neck up and dropping your shoulders down. You could turn your head from left to right just after finding some movement in the neck. Wake up the neck, do what feels good right here, right now. Maybe you tuck your chin to your chest and kind of wag your head a little bit. Maybe you lift the chin up to the sky and move a little bit more. Stretch it out left to right. Let it feel good, no rush, no hurry. And when you're ready, bring your head back to the midline of your body. You know that pose, the confidence stance we take? Bring your hands to your hips. Maybe press your thumbs, you know, kind of into your low back and let your chest lift up toward the sky. Here you go, you got a little benefit here. You can kind of massage your thumbs into your low back. <sighs> Sigh it out, let it feel good. Just kind of massage your back a little bit. <sighs> And if you've sighed it out enough and you want to engage your ujjayi pranayama breath, that's a great way to breathe. That would be closing your lips and breathing in and out of your nose only. As you inhale, feel your chest lift up. And as you exhale, settle into your hips. Let your knees melt closer to the earth. Are you massaging your low back a little bit? Let it feel awesome. Chest stays lifted, elbows are back. Take a deep breath in, steal your hands and a deep breath out. Lift your arms on up to the sky in your extended mountain pose. Arms are parallel to each other. You can put a little bend in your elbows if that feels better. Spiral your pinkies in a little bit as you reach nice and high up to the sky. Breathe in. Breathe out and soften your shoulders. Interlace your fingers. Send your palms up to the sky and start to just sway gently from side to side. So you're waking up those muscles between your ribs and you're getting your spine to move sideways. Let it feel good, no rush, no hurry. And then finish, come back to the midline of your body, reach up through your fingers again. Now turn your palms so they're facing the front of the room and then hinge forward in the hips. Let your hands come down to the earth. Maybe walk your hands forward a little bit or a lot. Think of your spine getting long. Keep both bottom cheeks down on your mat. Come to a point where it feels good. That stretch feels really good in your bottom. Breathe in. Soft breath out. Walk your hands back towards your body and then put your hands behind you on the ground and lift your chest up to the sky as you send your chin up to the sky too. Come back to a comfortable seated position, shoulders over your hips. Let's do a seated cat cow. Place your hands on your knees, tuck your chin to your chest and try to hollow out your belly as best you can. Think of arching your back toward the back of the room. And then inhale, do just the opposite. Send your chest and belly forward, your chin up toward the sky, your shoulders back. Cat-cow. We usually do it from a tabletop position. We're doing it seated today. Just a little different. Different is good. You got to try different things. You don't know what you might discover unless you try. So you're seated. Cat-cow. Cat-cow. 
Once you're done with your seated cat cow, place one hand down on your mat, lift the other one up to the sky and just bend to one side using that foundational elbow like an elevator to go up and down. Take it to what feels good for you. And as you're doing this, keep the top shoulder back. Don't let it collapse inward. Keep it back. Keep your chin. Keep your chin up. Keep your chin away from your chest. Stretch it out here. Keep both bottom cheeks down. And play with the elevator a little bit. Stretching, reaching, and coming back up. And when you're ready, let's go back up to a comfortable seated position. Hands back to the knees, just kind of your neutral reset. Breathe in, breathe out. Other arm goes up, up, up to the sky. Other arm comes down, down, down to the earth. Then that arm that's on the earth, it starts to bend. That elbow bends as you reach to the opposite side. Shoulder is back, chin is lifted, breathe. <sighs> All right, creating good habits. It's just investing in you, giving yourself good things. And it's those tiny little changes. Maybe it's drinking an extra glass of water today. Maybe it's doing 10 minutes of yoga today, but those tiny little changes really do lead to remarkable results. Let's come back up to the midline, lift both arms up to the sky, breathe in, big breath, and then come on down with the hands. Switch your legs out. Switch your legs out, bringing the other foot on top and the other one on the bottom, or however you're seated, just change it up a little bit. All right, nestle in. You're getting into the hips here, really, really good. We hold a lot of stress in our hips, and you don't even think about your hips except when you first come into it. And then we're gonna do all these other things with your arms, which are good for your body, but it also gets your mind off of that stretch in your hips. Hands to your knees. Take a deep breath in, maybe close your eyes, and a deep breath out. Circle your neck around like we did earlier. Maybe it feels a little bit looser. Turn left, turn right, turn your chin to the sky, bring, bring your chin to your chest, whatever feels good. Let your head float around on your shoulders. It's kind of like, <laughs> I saw that ad for that new virtual reality thing that Apple has out. They're like big goggles you put on and you can like see your computer screen in your room. You can watch a movie in 3D and it's all over the place. So your eyes are going all over the place, looking everywhere to see what you can see. So do that, do that. Move your head around so you can see everywhere. You can see what's behind you. You can see what's above. You can see what's below. Really move your neck. And then let's finish. Bring your head back to the midline of your body. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Confidence pose. Bring your hands to your hips. Maybe massage your low back with your thumb. Shoulders are back and down. Elbows are back as well. Just a nice little low back massage. Take advantage of this time. It's all good. Pushing the thumbs to each side of the spine. Massaging the low back. Breathe. You kind of feel, it's kind of feels like when we do ragdoll pose, when we're in a standing position in our warm up most days. When you're standing and you fold forward and you take your hands to opposite elbow creases and then you start to sway from side to side, you're stretching that muscle that you're massaging right now. Let it feel great. Breathe in, breathe out. Big deep breaths out. And then let's finish with the low back massage. Or if you want, stay, stay at it longer. It's all good. Remove your hands from your low back. Lift your arms on up to the sky. Stretch, reach through your fingertips. Find the light, be the light. Breathe in. Shoulders soften, breathe out. Interlace your fingers. Palms go up to the sky. That gentle sway back and forth. Let it feel great. I think a lot of times we go through everything way too fast in life. And you don't feel what you feel. You don't appreciate what you've got when you've got it. Oh boy, isn't that the truth? But enjoy the mobility that you have right here, right now. 
Feel how good that stretch feels. How much more do you want? Breathe. Let that stretch feel really good. Maybe you hang out on one side a little longer than the other. And then let's finish. Come back to the midline of your body. Place your hands on your knees. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Remember that breathing. Let's do cat-cow with that kind of breathing. Tuck your chin to your chest. Let your back arch to the back of the room. Hollow out your belly. Inhale, cow. Bring your belly forward. Shoulders back, chin up. Think cat-cow. Moving the spine like into the shape of a letter C and then into the shape of a backward letter C. So tuck the chin, tuck the belly. When you do cow, send your chest forward and belly forward. I really feel that in my top hip. Send the belly forward. It's a nice stretch that you don't normally feel in any other way. And continue. And then let's finish up. Bring your head back to the midline. Maybe you really like it, stay with it. I'm gonna walk my hands forward and I'm gonna take a big stretch here, reaching the hands forward as far forward as you like. Play with the belly breath a little bit, hollow out your belly, and then maybe you can walk your hands a little farther forward. But don't hold your breath, just hollow out the belly. Then inhale, your chest is gonna come up a little bit. Then exhale, maybe you take it a little further. Walk the hands back to the midline of the body. Sweep the arms back. Place them down as kickstands to the outsides of your hips. Lift your chest up to the sky. Chin goes up too. Breathe. And then finish. Shoulders back over your hips. Those side bends. Remember those arms lift. One hand comes down. Let the top arm that's reaching to the sky reach to the side of the room as your foundational arm bends to what feels good. Keep your bottom cheeks down, keep your top shoulder back, and keep your chin up. Stretch. Maybe, if you can remember back, how does this stretch feel differently than when we first started? Maybe you feel a little warmed up. Maybe you feel a little more mobile. Maybe you feel like, oh, that stretch feels even better. I can go even farther. Come on back up to the midline. Both arms go up, stretch it out, reach for the light. <laughs> Place your hand down and then stretch it in the opposite direction. Reach, stretch. All right, like I said, this is all on the mat today or in your chair, but I do have one balancing pose we're gonna do and it's up to you if you wanna do it. You can do it standing. That's the balancing part of it. Or you can do a similar pose reclined. I'll, I'll get there when we get there. Breathe. Play with your elbow a little bit. All right, let's go back up to the midline of your body. Reach both arms up to the sky because you can. And then hands to prayer center for just a moment here. Find your little mantra, your little thought that you want to think today that's all positive about you. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Maybe it's I am strong. Maybe it's I am flexible. Maybe it's I can. Maybe it's I'm mobile. Maybe because I am becoming. That's a good one. Whatever it is, have a positive thought and stick with it today. All right, let's come out of this pose. How do your hips feel? A lot of big stretching for the hips today. Um, if you were in this Sukhasana pose or whatever pose you were in, you were just resting into that pose. And that's what we do, rest into a pose for five to seven minutes in a restorative practice. And we're gonna do that tomorrow. So come back for that practice. I'm gonna sit on my heels. This is another pose. This is um, Thunderbolt pose. So I'm sitting on my heels. And if that feels good on your knees, give it a go. We're gonna tee out our arms and we're gonna do some arm circles, little circles to the back of the room. Get into the shoulders here. Keep your shoulders over your hips. Little teeny circles, eyes open or closed, it's up to you. The circles can be small, the circles can be big. 
little bend in the elbows might feel better. Maybe it's like you uh, bend your wrists and it's like you're washing the sides of your uh, room's windows. Maybe that feels good. I'm going to keep my palms down and I'm going to do even bigger circles. You do the circles that are right for you. We're going to do uh, a broken wing pose in a little bit and that's a big pose that gets into your shoulders. All right, maybe this is big enough, right? But we're going to warm them up forward and back, whatever feels good for you. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let's tee out our arms one more time. Turn your palms so they're facing the front of the room. Spread your fingers good and wide. Wiggle your fingers. Let's do a big hug. Bring those two extended arms parallel to each other toward the front of the room. Let them crisscross over the body, midline of the body, and then give yourself a big hug. Elbows are stacked. One arm is on top of the other. Remember which one's on top. Take your hands, reach for your spine. Soften your shoulders away from your ears. Squeeze the shoulders to the side of the room, or expand the shoulders to the side of the room. That's a better word. Breathe in, breathe out. Enjoy this big, tight, strong hug. Remember the arm that's on top, tee out your arms again. And while they're teed out, just pulse them back to the back of the room a little bit. That feels nice. Feel your chest lift. Cross the arms across the midline of the body again. Other arm on top. Hands, fingers reach towards the sides of your spine. Shoulders are away from your ears. Drop them on down. And then expand your shoulders to the sides of your room. So you don't realize it, but you're getting a nice stretch in your ankles here too. Breathe, squeeze, expand through the shoulders. Let it feel super good in your upper back. Let your arms float down by your sides. You can touch your thighs or bring them on down to the ground. I'm going to take both hands to the outside of my left thigh. I'm going to turn to the left. I got my hands here for leverage on the outside of my left thigh. And I'm just going to twist. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, twist some more. You got your hands here for a little bit of leverage. Inhale, lengthen up. Gotta find length before you can do the twist deeper. Exhale, belly button to your spine, maybe twist a little more. You could open your eyes and look really, really far right or keep your eyes closed, up to you. Back to the midline of your body. Take a breath here just to kind of reset. Hands to the outside of your right leg. Twist and turn to the right. You know the whole thing. Lengthen as you inhale, exhale as you twist. Maybe one more cycle of breath. Finish up back to the midline of your body. Let's do a child's pose. We'll go child's pose, tadpole, frog. Get into those inner thighs. All right, so come on to a child's pose. For your child's pose, this is where I mentioned the blocks. All right, so I've got two blocks here. One is a little smaller than the other. Okay, what you can do here for your child's pose, you can keep your knees together and your big toes together. You can put your hips back to your heels the way we were just a few moments ago. You can bring your head down to the ground or to this block. Now maybe the block is just, you know, I'm, I'm too high up. I could go lower, I want to go lower. And I remove the block, I just can't get my head down to the ground. That's where this block comes in. It's a little bit smaller. It allows you to incrementally work on changing your poses a little bit. So maybe that feels really good. In this classic child's pose, and you can always put your head on the ground. In this classic child's pose, arms are down by your sides, palms are face up. You're lengthening through your spine and you're finding peace here. I'm going to go to a wide-legged child's pose. Knees spread wide, big toes back to your heels. You can use a block, several blocks, no blocks, it's your call. Reach your arms long to the top of the room. Place your, head, place your head down on your mat. You know, here's a place where you could use your towel too. You don't want to get, especially if it's a borrowed mat at a gym or something, you don't want to put your head on that mat where somebody just had their bottom. You can put your towel down. Reach your arms long to the top of the mat.
Breathe in, breathe out, remove the tongue from the roof of your mouth. Imagine your tailbone going more to the back of the room. Imagine your spine lengthening. If you're in this extended child's pose, let it feel really good in your shoulders. If you're in the classic child's pose, let's evolve a little bit here. Maybe spread your knees a little bit and reach your arms forward. And your arms don't have to reach terribly far forward. You could be more on your elbows, kind of like a sphinx. Just try a little bit more. And if you don't like it, go back to where you were. Breathe. Now I'm gonna widen the knees a little bit. That is your tadpole pose. So widen your knees a little bit. Now my knees are gonna come off the mat. If you wanna turn your body so that you're 90 degrees from what you are in this orientation, then you can keep your knees comfortably on your mat. Or put a towel under your knees. You know, just make it work. So think of breathing out your back. Feel the ribs expand to the sides of your room, kind of like how they felt when you did that big hug. The toes, I'm gonna let them wiggle apart and I'm gonna bring my shins a little more parallel to the sides of my mat. That's that full frog pose. Deep breaths. and do what's right for you. As long as it doesn't hurt, as long as you're not in pain, breathe through it. If it's just uncomfortable, you can do it. Just go back to your breath. If it's painful, come out of it though, you know that. Breathe in, breathe out. There's your fullest expression in your frog pose. All right, time to come out of it now, or you know that's the beauty of doing it at home. You don't have to feel strange if you stay in a pose longer. Go ahead and do what feels good for you. All right, I'm gonna come out of this and I'm gonna come to a neutral tabletop. I'm gonna do bird dog. All right, so for your bird dog pose, you can put a block at the top of your mat. You're in a neutral tabletop position. That means your knees are under your hips and your wrists are under your shoulders. Lengthen through your spine, keep your spine nice and long and straight. Push into the earth with not only your hands, but with your feet as well. For a bird dog pose, it lengthens your spine. Spine is so important. I'm gonna begin by lifting my right leg. I'm gonna bring my knee to about hip height, then I'm gonna dial in my right hip and I'm gonna bring it down. I want my hips equal distant to the mat. I don't want it popping up. So hips are equal distant to the mat. I'm gonna extend my right leg long, keeping the knee at about hip height. There's a half a bird dog, if you will. Then I'm gonna take my other arm. Since my right leg is lifted, I'm gonna lift my left arm and reach it forward. I can reach for that block and I can stretch it out here. I can take my hand away from the block, flip my hand so my thumb is up like a hitchhiker and I can spread my fingers good and wide, all the while pushing hard into the mat. I'm gonna lengthen through my spine. This is your bird dog pose. Hold it here, stay strong, stay steady. I love the saying, a couple sayings about the spine. One is, how old would you be if you didn't know how old you were? I guess that's not so much about the spine, is it? But the next one uh, uh, um, ties in with it. So how old would you be if you didn't know how old you were? Don't think about the numbers. How old would you be if you didn't know how old you were? And the next question is, draw your toes towards your shin. Let your heel go to the back of the room. Stretch and reach, hold it here. This is a long bird dog. Good job on you. Hold on. The other question, or the other statement is, you are as young as your spine is flexible. You want to keep that spine moving. You want to find length in it. You want to find mobility and flexibility in it. Hand comes down. Knee comes down. Aren't you glad that the knees came down too? Inhale, lengthen up. Push into the earth. Go to the left side. Left leg extends. Left heel to the back of the room. Hold the leg right here. You can stay with the hands down too. It's all right, it's all good. Because right, right, right now what you're feeling is that compression in your low back. I'm gonna add in my right arm, send it long to the front of the room. Use that block if you're feeling it. Push hard into the earth. 
So push that top of the right foot into the earth, as well as the left arm. Fingers spread wide in the right hand, thumb up, stretch and reach those fingers further far forward. Get into the mobility in the shoulders, push hard into the earth and stay right here. You're strong, you're lengthening your spine. That little compression in the low back is strengthening your low back. Nobody wants low back pain. This feels really nice, doesn't it? Now your left hip, check it out. Is it close to the earth? Is it popped up? Have both hips equal distant to your mat. Stretch it out, breathe. Length, strength, alignment, and balance. Right hand comes down, left knee comes down. Oh my goodness, good bird dog, everybody. Let's come on down and do a broken wing. Come all the way down to your mat. Tee out your left arm and bring that left arm to about shoulder height. It's nice and straight and you're gonna take it to shoulder height. And if you don't like that, bring it down a bit or bend the elbow, whatever you like. This is your broken wing pose. Bend the opposite arm. I'm gonna bend my right arm, place my hand on the mat underneath my right collarbone. I'm going to roll onto my left hip. Remember that left arm's extended. Roll onto the left hip. Using this right arm, remember that elevator arm, push into the mat to what feels good for you. What you wanna feel here is that stretch in the left shoulder. Adjust your left arm so it feels right and use the strength in the right arm to increase or decrease how it feels. The leg that's on top, it's the right leg. Bend the knee if you like and bring the sole of the foot in front of the extended left leg. You can drive the right knee up to the sky if that feels good. And you know, there are other options. Knees can both be together and legs long. Knees can be slightly bent, like in a fetal position, but try to roll that left, right hip on top of the left. Right leg can be extended, or right leg can be bent, and push the sole of the foot into the back of the front extended leg. Did I say that right? Top leg, right leg bends, and instead of resting the sole of the foot in front of the extended left leg, you rest it behind the extended left leg. Breathe, your broken wing pose. Breathe in and breathe out. Hello to Betty, Diane, it's hard to read sideways. Marietta, Lori, Tammy, Stan, Stella, Tina, Anna, Nancy, Tom, Andrew, Margaret, how are you guys? Glad you're here. All right, I'm done on this side, how about you? Let's roll to the other side, roll onto your belly, send your legs long, other side, extend the right arm. I'm gonna turn so my bottom is not facing the camera. Gonna come down on the belly, right arm extends, left arm bends, roll onto that right hip now. All right, do with your legs what you like. Press into that left arm a lot, a little, somewhere in between. Do what's exactly right for you. A little bend in the knees might feel better. Top leg bent, sole of the foot in front of the knee and drive that bent knee up to the sky. Maybe that feels really good. Breathe in, breathe out. All right, I'm gonna do something a little different today. I'm just gonna tell you what's coming. We're gonna do our one minute plank like we do just about every day. But I'm gonna do the timer differently. I'm gonna count up. We're gonna use the timer three times today. Only one plank though, I promise. And you know with plank, do it your way. And there's lots of ways to do it. Everybody can do a plank, because you're gonna do it your way and I'll show you different ways. All right, how is that stretch in the shoulder coming? Nice mobility there. Let's roll onto our bellies and let's come out of this pose. All right, bring your hands, both hands under your collarbones. The legs are long. Press into your hands. Feel the sensation of the weight in your arms. Press on up to a seal pose. Soften in your glutes. Breathe. All right, I'm gonna grab a drink of water and we're gonna talk about plank for just a second. Okay, so everybody can do a plank. Yes, you can. Because here's how you can do it. All right, you can lie on your back. Lie on your back. Put the blocks in your hands and send the blocks up to the ceiling and imagine that the ceiling is the ground. Try that on for size if you're new to planks. Or if you wanna try something a little more, you can come to a 
a neutral tabletop. Walk your hands a little forward, send your knees a little back, and then hinge your weight forward, again, bringing the shoulders over the wrists, and you'll feel the distribution of the weight shift to your upper body. Bend your elbows a little bit like you're about to do a push-up, and you can stay on your knees. You could send your legs further back, come down to your forearms, and they're gonna be parallel to each other like the number 11. Hands on your mat, Send your knees back a little bit and stay right here. Again, shoulders are gonna be over your elbows for stability in the upper arm there. And you can stay right here. I'm gonna bring my bottom down a little bit and hold it. You could tuck your toes towards your shins. You could pop on up and take a forearm plank. That's a great variation as well. I'm gonna take a high plank and you can do whichever one you like. The timer is gonna be set for one minute and it's gonna be counting up instead. So. You can look at the screen if you want, or I'll let you know how long you've been in your plank. All right, let's get into the variation we like, and Dwayne, set the timer, please. All right, here we go, we're counting up. You've been in it two seconds, good on you. All right, so in a high plank, your fingers are spread wide. You wanna create a lot of surface area. Your shoulders are over your wrists. I say that so much, because that's important for arm stability. Legs are long, heels are shooting energy to the back of the room. Push into the earth and stay strong. Keep your back nice and flat. We're 20 seconds in, there you go. Breathe, hold. Stay strong, stay like a plank. Keep your elbows hugged in. You don't want them splaying out or bent out to the sides. We're over halfway there. Awesome work. Now, if you're in a high plank and it's getting to you, drop to your knees a little bit, take a slight break. Hold on here, push the earth away. Another option would be to send your hips high to a down dog and breathe just for a second. Take that little break. We've got 10 seconds to go, guys. You can do this. Hold on, push the earth away. Five, four, three, two, and one, and done. There you go, all right. A little bit of a plank, oh, we're really counting up. All right, so how did you like it? How did you do? What do you think about the counting up versus counting down? It's no big deal. Um, let me know, we got a group. It's called Friends of 316 Yoga. It's a private group on Facebook. Sign up and just let me know what you think. Okay. Next thing, dead bug. This is not easy, dead bug is not easy. Come on down to recline. So sit on your bottom, hands to prayer center, come back to your positive statement about you, ingrain that thought in your body. That is who you are. You are doing what you are becoming. You are becoming what you are doing. All right, lift your legs up. Knees over hips, toes towards shins. Hands press into your thighs, and I mean press, good and strong. Press your thighs back into your hands, really strong. Your tailbone is super plugged into the mat. Your shoulders are down. You're pressing hard with your hands. You're pressing hard back with your thighs. Stay right here. This is your dead bug pose. Breathe. Press hard. Good and strong, really embrace the shake here. That's where the magic happens. Breathe. I'll tell you where we're gonna go next, but keep pressing. Keep pressing in both directions. We're gonna go to a boat pose and we're gonna use the strap today. Yesterday we didn't, some days we do, some days we don't, shake it up. Breathe, push one more time and finish. Let your legs come down, legs go long, arms go high overhead, stretch it out in a stick pose. Right about now, are you wondering, we started out just sitting, sitting and breathing. Oh my gosh, how far we've come. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Stretch it out, point it out. Big number one, float your arms down by your sides. Either press on up with your hands or don't use your hands. Think of your core and come on up to seated. Grab that strap if you wanna use it. I like to shake it up and do different things. Place the strap underneath your feet, sit up nice and straight, and have them be like reins of a horse. Hug your elbows in, lean on back, lift your feet up. Lift your feet up, lift your chest up. Lift the corners of your mouth up and smile. Oh, just enjoy it. Enjoy what you can do. There are many that can't do what you're doing and they wish they could do exactly what you're doing. So enjoy what you got while you got it. Maybe lift the legs a little higher, maybe a bend in the knees feels good. Find the secret formula that it works for you. I'm gonna sit back like I'm in a recliner. I'm gonna take it back a little bit more. Breathe in, 
breathe out. There is your variation of your boat pose today. Shoulders are away from the ears. Legs can lift a little more or a little less and then finish, come back to seated. You got this strap, let's take advantage of a nice comfortable forward fold. Bring the straps into both hands and hinge forward. Take a restorative forward fold by sending your gaze towards your knees or up towards your belly button. Hold onto that strap, nice big stretch here. In the back of the legs, didn't have to tell you that, right? Let's finish, remove the strap. Now you got a choice. You've got a choice to come into pentacle. Let's show you how real quick how to do that. Maybe you just want to take a quick one, everybody. Pentacle pose, you're reclined. Oh, it feels so good. Arms are uh, like a letter Y. Legs are spread too to bring your body into a capital letter X shape. Backs of your hands are on the earth. Now we did that broken wing pose. Maybe you've got greater mobility in your shoulders. Think about it. Maybe this usually doesn't feel so great. But now that you've done broken wing, maybe you've got more mobility in the shoulders. You could bring your arms down a little bit like a snow angel and find the sweet spot where it feels like a proper balance between comfort and effort. Breathe here in your pentacle pose. If you wanna join me for one balancing pose, let's go. All right, so we're gonna come on up to a standing position. And I'm gonna use that timer again. We're gonna be here for two minutes. We're gonna do a one minute tree pose on each side. All right, so here's the deal. Root into one foot, weight out of the other. Open up the knee to the side of the room. Have a chair here if you want. Bring the heel in toward the ankle. Let's just try this. Take the foot perhaps up. Let's just try the one minute part. Find where the foot feels right for you. Just don't put the foot on the knee. Knees aren't supposed to bend sideways. Find a comfortable spot. Let's start the timer now. All right, timer's going, but try not to look at it. Hands to prayer center, look up to where the ceiling and the wall meet. Hold on here to the chair, hands at prayer center. We're 15 seconds in. Find your balance, maybe hands to your hips. Maybe you grow a branch. We're 20 seconds in, hold on. The biggest thing that'll help you, two things. Focus upward where the ceiling and the wall meet. Don't look at anything moving like me. Press the foot into the leg and the leg into the foot. Those things help. We're over halfway there. We're 37 seconds in. Maybe you sway your branches. If you fall out, no big deal. Get right back in. Don't quit, don't give up. Focus, chest is lifted, lift through the crown of your head. Find your strong foundation in your foot. Breathe, five seconds to go. Three, two, one, and done. Hands back to prayer center, guide the knee to the front of the room, plant the foot on the earth next to the other one. I tell you, I was able to stay in the whole time because I looked primarily up at the ceiling and the wall, but every time I'd come back and look at the timer, I felt a little uh, losing my balance. So get into your head. Focus, 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 root into the other foot. Open up the other leg, place it wherever is right for you. Get it comfortable. And when you're ready, we'll begin with the timer. Let's go. All right, root into that foot. You're solid, you're strong. Give yourself the gift of this present moment. Hands at prayer center, tell yourself your mantra. I'm good, I'm balanced, I'm strong. Hold on, foot presses into the leg, leg into the foot. Arms can reach up, 23 seconds in, almost halfway. Focus, focus, breathe. 38 seconds in, lengthen up through the crown of your head. Think of your hips as nice and lengthened and tall. 15 seconds to go. Breathe. You're almost there. Stay strong. Stay strong. Five, four, three, two, one, and done. Hands to prayer center. Guide the knee to the front of the room. Left foot meets right. Right foot meets left. You did it. Let's meet our friends down on the ground. Hinge forward. Let your arms hang toward the earth. Tailbone to the sky. Look back to your knees. Walk your hands forward, come on down, nice and slowly, nice generous bend in the knees, come on down to the earth. Take your legs, 
long. Everybody else, if you're in pentacle, bring your legs together, arms down by your sides. Let's meet back in that seated forward fold. Toes up toward the sky, arms lift high. Exhale, hinge forward. We did this with a strap a moment ago. We don't need no stinking strap. Let's just see how we do. Come on, you did it with the strap. Maybe you can do the exact same thing without the strap now. Bring your elbows closer to your knees. Forehead towards your knees and finish shoulders over your hips. Spread your legs wide and find your block or two or three or however many you got. <clears throat> Bring them between your legs. Rest your forearms onto the blocks at whatever height you like or bring your forehead down to the blocks and same thing too if you're ever in a gym and you're using the blocks bring your own little towel because those blocks are used for lots of things and i think you'll like having the towel on it breathe little bend in your knees might feel great breathe in breathe out maybe hands what can i do with them you can bring them to the insides of your ankles and open your legs up a little wider you could reach your arms to the front of your room, feeling it in the shoulders. You can decrease the height of your blocks. <clears throat> and breathe and rest and be thankful. Let's slowly come on up. If you want to stay there longer, if that's speaking to you, do that. I'm going to bring the shoulders over the hips. I'm going to come on to my belly. I'm going to do Superman, and I'm going to go from Superman to airplane. All right, so come on to your belly. Arms reach long like that extended child's pose to the front. Legs are long down by your sides. They don't have to be zipped up. Do whatever's comfortable. Get your pelvis in the mat. Maybe lift one leg or the other or both legs. Feel the compression in your low back. So like Superman's flying just in his backside. Lift the arms on up. There you go. Keep your nose down towards your mat. Breathe. Lengthen. Maybe bring your legs a little higher. Hold it here. Sweep your arms back nice and straight to like an airplane pose. Palms are face down. Fingers reach toward the outsides of your pinky toes. Lift in the chest a little bit more and then sweep your arms forward. Come back to your Superman. Sweep your arms back again, lift. Third time's the charm, arms go forward, lift. Superman, arms sweep back, lift, airplane. Press into your hands underneath your collarbones, press on up, seal pose. When you're ready, let's come on down to a reclined position. Bring your <clears throat> eye shade if you got one, or your towel up by your shoulders. Come on to a seated position. Soles of your feet are on your mat. Hands to prayer center. Lengthen up. Come back to reclined. Mon mantra time. Tell yourself that positive statement and slowly recline. We're going to come into a bridge pose. Take it nice and slowly because you are strong in your core. Recline all the way. Heels up towards your bottom a little more. Arms down by your sides. Press into your feet. Lift your hips up. Feel the stretch in the front of your hips. Wiggle your shoulders towards your spine. Lift your hips a little higher and breathe. Roll your spine down one vertebra at a time. Extend your left leg long. Let's do a supine twist. We did a seated twist. Let's do it supine now. Left toes drawn toward your left shin. Left shin is on your mat. Arms lift up. Interlace your fingers beneath your right knee. Draw your right toes toward your shins and circle your ankles. Circle your ankles and ankle in the other direction. Hug it in, good and tight. Left hand guides the right knee across the midline of your body. You roll onto your left hip. Keep your right shoulder down and tee out your right arm. Oh, let this feel good in your back. Breathe in, breathe out. Bring your right hip down to the earth. Hug that right knee in. And you know, you can always use your towel if your arms just aren't quite long enough. Hug it in. Right leg long left knee bends. Interlace fingers or towel under the left knee. Circle the ankle one way, then the other. Hug it in, good and tight, good and strong. Your arms are strong. You did plank. Take your right hand, guide the left knee across the midline of your body. Enjoy the journey of rolling onto that right hip. Tee out your left arm. Look to the left as best you can. Twist in the neck. Your neck has mobility. Shoulders are soft and down. Nice big twist here. Finish. Left hip comes back to the earth. Hug the knee in. Again, maybe circle the ankle. Send the left leg long onto your mat. Drag both heels up at the same time. 
as if you're going dragging them through cement. Bend the knees closer to the chest, send the legs high up to the sky. Slowly let the legs, which are extended, come all the way down. Think like you're back in boat pose. Legs come down, down, down. Heels drag up towards your bottom. Now bring left hand under left knee, right hand under right knee. Rock a little bit from side to side. Feel that same sensation that you had when we did that um, little bit of low back massage when we started the practice. Come back to the midline, nestle your tailbone in, take your hands, capture the insides of your calves, or maybe you capture right under the knees. I'm gonna reach for my heels and capture them. Draw the toes towards the shins, helps you lock in on those heels. Send one leg straight, then the other straight. One knee is bent, the other leg lifts. This is your happy baby pose, Ananda Balasana. Great pose, knee flexibility. Oh, let it feel great. Send both heels up to the sky. Send both pinky toes toward the earth. Maybe grab your hands inside your thighs, open up in the legs, and then bring the knees together. Then the ankles come together too. Remember how we lowered the legs? Let's do it again. Lower them nice and slowly all the way down. Arms can be down by your sides. All the way down. Let them touch down, lift them all the way up. Float them on down, you are in control. And you know, if this just didn't quite work, and maybe you bring one leg down and then do the legs individually. Bring one on down, then lift the other up, bring it on down. One more time, legs lift, toes towards the shin, heels going toward the back of the room. Now you can really feel your tailbone all the way down on the mat. And then let your legs float on down, nice and slowly. Strong core, you got it going on. Hover them just above the earth for a second, maybe. And then bring them all the way down. Ah, <sighs> brief pentacle pose, big capital letter X. Capital letter X, arms high overhead or snow angel them to whatever feels good in your shoulders, legs spread wide. Breathe in, breathe out. Maybe today you feel particularly open and ready for change and receptivity. Maybe you stay right here in your pentacle pose. I'm gonna work my feet in a little bit and come into a classic final Shavasana pose. Heels are kinda of toward the edges of my mat. I can feel the mat under my feet. Pinky toes fall toward the mat. I'm gonna bring my arms down by my sides and let my shoulders rest. They did a lot today. Arms down by your sides, palms face up, deep breath in. And deep breath out. Cover your eyes with your eye shade if you like. Soften the area between the eyebrows. <sighs> big breaths in, big breaths out. Maybe sigh it out. <sighs> breathe in. And breathe out. Arms are heavy, let your eyes be heavy too. This is your final Shavasana pose. Try to keep the thoughts at bay and just focus on your breath. If you've got your remote control nearby, hit pause here and stay as long as feels right for you. I usually like to stay about five minutes, but in our practice, that's you're in control. That's what's nice about doing this practice. You're in control, you can keep that remote on pause as long as you like. When you're ready to resume, you can hit your play again and meet us right here. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Start to circle your wrists and your ankles. On an inhale, reach high up overhead and stretch like it's your first good morning stretch. Oh, appreciate your shoulders from that big hug pose to your broken wing, lots of shoulder mobility. Bring your legs and knees bent, bring your arms and elbows bent, and roll onto one side or the other. Use your low arms bicep as a pillow for your head, soften in the top shoulder, breathe in, breathe out. 
savor this moment. As you're ready, slowly press on up, eyes opened or closed, your decision, press on up, hands or no hands, your call, sit however is comfortable, any way you want. Bring your hands to prayer center. Take a deep breath in. Your mantra, remember it. Take a deep breath out. Blink your eyes open. Remember your mantra for today. Tell yourself that. Rest assured that you're on a good path. Deviate here and there. We all deviate, but come back to your path, your yoga path. Just stay the course. You'll feel better. Ignore the distractions of doubt. Oh my gosh, I'm reading a great book. It's called Winning the War of Your Mind. Ignore the distractions of doubt that attempt to pull you away from your goals, what is good for you, what you know is good. Come back to your peace every day. Come back to the peace that you find in your yoga. Stress number. You took it in the beginning. What was it? What is it now? That is evidence for you to assess the value of your yoga. Love you guys. See you on your mats tomorrow. (laughs) Bye-bye. Have fun today. Hello, sweet dog. You're a good girl. Yes, You're you still are. here, and I'm really glad for that. Keep this in mind. The path is made through repetition. Keep showing up, and good things will happen. You know that. I'm glad that you're still sticking around. Tell your friends what the yoga is doing for you. Our yoga is free for anybody and everybody on Facebook and YouTube, and they can join in anytime from the privacy of their own home. Tell them about our practice, please. If you'd like to support our broadcast, you can visit our website. It's www.316yoga.com. Stay on your path. Enjoy your yoga and have a great rest of your day. See you on your mats tomorrow.